Hey everyone, I am Sanket Singh. I am working as a software engineer at Google and welcome back to my channel. So guys, in this video, I am going to talk to you about a few tips and I would say a few pointers that I implemented on myself and I believe are going to be really helpful for having a successful career in tech. In my past experiences, I worked with very small scale startups as an intern also. I also contributed as an open source developer with Howard University. Right. Later, I also worked with big top 10 startups of India and even big tech giants like LinkedIn and Google. So here are a few things that I would like to share with all of you guys that can be really helpful when you are as working as an intern also and when you are working as a software engineer also. In both of the times, this, these two, three things are going to be really, very important for you. I'm going to keep this video short and crisp. So I would require your undivided attention and I would request you guys to watch the video till the end. And if you guys enjoyed the video then, then please don't forget to drop a like and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that we can reach to more and more people and spread the word uh, among the whole community. So let's just start. So the first and the foremost thing that I believe is really important is to read more and more articles, read more and more posts and make sure that every day you are learning something new, right? So I believe reading, reading documentations, reading books, reading articles, this is a very, very important skill that everyone need to possess, right? Nowadays, I see a lot of people uh, really into watching videos, tutorial videos, etc. But what I have seen in my experiences, video tutorials are really good to have a kickstart in any topic. But if you want to go very in depth and you want to analyze the, all the perspective of something, then you need to have a habit of reading a lot of articles. So when I was in turn and I had to like uh, hop on to some new technology, I definitely watched a video. So I generally used to watch a video which is like going to give me a good wider perspective uh, in around three to three and a half hours. I used to watch it on uh, 2x. But later daily, I used to do one thing that daily and daily I am reading at least one new thing about the whole infrastructure or the whole tech stack. Uh, so that whenever a new problem arises, I know where to debug, I know where to look into for the solutions. This reading habit is going to be really important as a developer because there is a whole lot chunk of, uh, I would say, information to process, right? Daily, daily new updates come for the frameworks, daily, daily new languages come uh, and new updates to the older languages come. So in order to be updated always, you need to have this habit of reading. So this is one of the most important points that I would like to share with you guys. Before moving forward, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video that is Geeks for Geeks. So I just told you guys that how important it is to read more and more article and enhance your knowledge. And Geeks for Geeks is a portal where you can find tons and tons of article regarding different tech domains. So let me explore you through the website. So here you can see this is the practice page for Geeks for Geeks. Here you will find a hell lot of options that you can explore and enhance your knowledge. So you can do a lot of problem solving regarding data structures and algorithms. Here you can find the problem page where you will be also given what all companies this problem were, was asked, what was the topic and what are the related interview experiences and courses for the problem. You can submit the problem and see your progress that whether you have submitted the correct question or not. You will find a lot of topics like dynamic programming, trees, graphs, etc. for which you can do more and more problem solving. Apart from that, you can go to the courses tab where you will be able to find some live courses, some self paced courses for you, for yourself, which you can explore if you want to learn the topics that you are not feeling very comfortable with. Apart from that, in the practice page of Geeks for Geeks, you can even get hired with the help of Geeks for Geeks. You can prepare yourself for the coding interviews and this job portal will help you get hired where you can directly apply for tech profiles without any cost involved. You can go through the job description and if you feel that the given job is suitable for you, then you can send an application for free. Right. Apart from that, you can see this events page where you can get updates on any upcoming event and the kind of past events that you, you would have missed. Right. If you wish to come for a specific webinar, you can block yourself for the corresponding week. And here is one more fun part that is problem of the day. If you feel difficult to develop a habit of coding, then Geeks for Geeks is providing some extra intense incentive to keep yourself going. Become a more consistent coder by solving one question every day 
at their problem of the day portal and stand even a chance to win exciting prices. The question will cover topics on data structures and algorithms and you will be having 24 hours to channel your inner geek to solve the problem. Here's a little about the incentive that you will earn just by coding. You can solve a problem to earn one geek bit. If you solve problems for eight consecutive days, you will get eight additional geek bits. You must have over 50 geek bits to be eligible for redeeming prices. And what you can win? You can win Amazon vouchers, Geeks for Geeks merchandise, some special discount on GFG courses and annual GFG premium subscription. So here you can see all of this on just one portal where you can even read a hell lot of articles which are completely freely available. So do explore Geeks for Geeks today and start your coding journey with GFG. The second most important point is code reviews. When I say code reviews, I don't mean that you need to uh, make sure that the code that you are submitting is getting reviewed properly. Rather than hop on to someone else code and try to review their code. So this was a habit that I got in, uh, from LinkedIn. So in LinkedIn, my manager used to suggest me that whenever your teammates also, even if they are senior engineers, have submitted a new pull request, try to read their request and try to drop some comments, drop your suggestions, drop some improvements on their PRs. I was wondering that, okay, they are implementing some uh, advanced features or let's say they are really into the product and I'm very new. So how I would be able to contribute? Then he mentioned very, very important fact that in the initial days, there will be friction, but at least I can drop some reviews regarding the code styles, right? The language, best practices for the language. And by reading their code, even if I'm not able to drop a comment, I'll be able to see and observe some patterns, some good coding patterns, some good commenting patterns, right? How to segregate my code, how to style my code, just like how senior engineers are doing, right? Because by reading others code, you also get to know how they are writing the code and you get involved more in the product. So even doing code reviews is really important from your initial days only. And trust me, if you will uh, do code reviews of your other teammates and even senior engineers, everyone is going to encourage you more and more because anytime, anywhere, someone can point out a mistake that could have led a very huge bug and you can be the one who uh, avoided it. So doing code reviews of other persons are also really important for, I would say, a very good and successful journey in tech. So whether you are an intern or you're working as a full-time engineer, a very important meeting will be always there in your calendar. That is one-on-one -on -one with your manager or let's say some senior engineer or maybe your mentors. Try to make these one-on-ones as effective as possible. Don't just discuss that what you did in the last week or last two weeks or let's say last month, but instead keep these things for the team meetings or team sync ups and try to discuss what you should do for the coming month or maybe the coming quarter. Let's say you are uh, working as an intern. Try to ask your managers that, okay, what more I need to do in order to grab a PPO? If you're an SD1, what other things I need to do to get a promotion or let's say to get even uh, better in the project? Try to have a future goal aligned with your managers because in that case only, you will be given tasks and projects which are going to be aligned with your goal and also your manager is also contributing towards your, uh, I would say, growth and successful future. These one-on-ones are really crucial. Don't take these lightly. If you feel that, okay, in the last month or the last quarter, you were not very effective, mention that, that, okay, these were a few reasons uh, due to which I was not that effective. I'll make sure that, okay, in the next quarter, I am doing things better. What do you suggest, uh, sir, that I should do? Right. These, this one-on-one -on -one can be a really, uh, I would say, important meeting that is going to help you to get quick promotions and also get even better projects in your, I would say, team and the company. After a while, you will feel that, okay, let's say you, you have worked for six months, eight months, one year, or maybe two years now in your team and company. You will feel a bit more comfortable with the overall tech stack and whatever project you are doing. You will be knowing all the business use cases and uh, whatever uh, corner cases are there in your product. But don't just sit there and like wait for like more tasks to come in your project only. Try to contribute or try to make some extra side projects also. Maybe you can contribute to some open source uh, softwares or maybe you can make some of your own projects also. There are a lot of, I would say, uh, tutorials. There are a lot of uh, resources using which you can learn new technologies and you can try to build more projects because after some point of time, if you will not grill your brain, if you will not grill yourself with some new skills, then it will be really hard for you if you will, uh, let's say, take a shift or take a new lap in your career, right? Let's say you shift a company and then there's a completely whole different tech stack. So always try to make sure that you are there with your foundations ready, always. 
in order to do that you need to have something that you are doing apart uh, apart from your corresponding i would say project it can be a project from your company only right or maybe it can be some personal project let's say in some quarter you uh, take out two to three weeks and just make a simple side project so that you can be in touch with the technologies that you maybe learned while back in your college but now you are not now no more in touch so i can give you some examples on that so let's say uh, when i was in college i was working mainly with node js and uh, ruby but when i went to linkedin uh, most of the things were in java but sometimes also i got some projects in uh, javascript and all so i really make sure that okay every time after some months i'm revising few of my concepts i'm making like let's say a very small app and just like trying to uh, grill up myself with the with the main skills that i i really uh, used to possess in my colleges because every time if you are learning something new or let's say if you are revising the older stuff you are keeping yourself updated in the overall industry so this is i would say is going to be a really important thing that you should definitely do one more thing that i feel uh, that a lot of people do is they just keep on learning data structures and algorithms i believe data structures and algorithms are the main foundations uh, of the overall i would say computer science engineer right a lot of people ask me that okay why companies are data structures and algorithms i believe that they ask data structures and algorithms to give a common and i would say level playing field for everyone because in the hiring of a software engineer someone can be an android engineer someone can be a web developer like are they going to be judged on different questions no so there should be some common playing ground and i believe this is really important but what i believe is people just do data structures and algorithms right sometimes you should also try to upskill yourself with the new tech with the new dev that is going on in the industry right daily and daily new frameworks and new libraries come up languages like ruby python javascript these are giving tremendous amount of updates right so i believe as a student when you are as a student or even when you are working in your uh, company and let's say want to take a shift make sure that you just are not sticked to data structures and algorithms everybody wants an engineer right who is an engineer engineer is someone who is a builder also and a problem solver also they just don't want some interview crackers people are nowadays just learning to crack interviews they are into like interview boot camps and everything interview boot camps are doing great jobs but as a student you should understand one more thing that a company just don't want an interview cracker they want an engineer they want someone who can work in a team who can build a project and in order to build those project there will be a lot of problems he or she can solve those problems also they want an overall package right you should be good with your communication skills you should be good with the teamwork in order to build te- uh, teamwork you should go to hackathon you should go to team events these things are really really important to grow as an engineer in the overall industry because trust me if you are someone who can just solve an algorithmic problem but you are not a team player then also it would be really hard for you so try to be an overall engineer right don't just stick to one thing that you are really interested in make sure that you have a good balance of skills that you are having right having one skill in depth is really really important but also having a balance of skills is also really important so this is also is going to be one of my tip that okay just don't focus on lead code and just solve questions to crack an interview even if you are solving question try, try to get the concept why these concepts are used why these data structures are used why these algorithms are used this is going to be really important and whenever you are learning dev try to do projects try to contribute in open source softwares try to get some internships where you can work on actual with actual team and actual product this is going to be really important so try to be an engineer just don't try to be a interview cracker or like let's say a freelance developer so this is going to be one another tip from my side so that was it guys that was it for today's video i hope that these tips were really helpful for you guys these are something that i implemented on myself also and i felt that okay i was having a good curve of i would say improvement in my overall development skills in overall of my cs foundational skills and i believe if you you will try also to inculcate these habits and these things in yourself you are going to have a great future ahead so if you guys enjoyed this video then don't forget to hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so that you can never miss a video on our channel so till then take care guys bye bye have a great week ahead and love you all